It's time for Tiger Net Talk with L. Swan. You know, that's why Carolina's in Chapel Hill and USC's in California. And the university in this state always has been, always will be Clemson. Print that. Tweet that. And I hope they come in undefeated. That's what I told you before the game. Our team believes. Our team believes they got heart. We got greatness in us. They say we can't do it. What they say now? Down go the champs. Welcome back in to another edition of Tiger Net Talk. I'm your host, Lawton Swan. Glad to be here with you live on the front page of TigerNet.com and also on the front page of Vocal.com and, as always, ClemsonPodcast.com, which I want to go ahead and tell you guys, and I mention this each week, we are moving over to Clemson Sports Talk. Dot com. We bought it. We're rebuilding it. So a little bit of a rebranding going on here. We're getting everything squared away. The football season is approaching. The advertisers are coming on board. And I really do appreciate those people who have uh, come on board with us here and looking forward to spending close to an hour with you. Not quite an hour, as you always know. We get close, and during football season, we may get there before you know it. But I got an exciting program for you. We've got Clemson Tom, the Internet sensation. He took off last year uh, about as quickly as Sammy Watkins coming out of a break. And uh, I tell you what, that young man did a fantastic job, I think, for Clemson fans. And uh, he's really taking advantage of social media. We're going to have Clemson Tom right here with us. If you're watching the program on Vocal or on the front page of TigerNet, stick around. You're going to enjoy that. When Clemson Tom comes on board, we're going to have the live video feed up and running as well. Looking forward to it. And another thing we've got going on here on the program, we have gotten confirmed so far a couple of Clemson uh, I will say uh, a couple of Clemson legends and some very uh, high-level Clemson folk, and we're working on one other additional person to come on board with us. I don't want to give that away who we've got, but we're going to have a little pick em contest this year during football season, and if we can land the fearsome foursome, it's going to be pretty unbelievable. But uh, I'm excited about that and the, the direction that's headed. I can't wait to give you all that information in just a couple of weeks who's coming on board to make picks against me each and every week. Now, they won't be on the program. They'll email us, but we're going to give that information out to you. Well, I know you're tired of hearing about me and what we've got going on. You want to hear about the Clemson Tigers, and we've got people who are asking questions in the chat room. Uh, absolutely looking forward to hearing from them. But, you know, the scrimmages this past week, you have one – uh, uh, not quite a week ago, coming up a week uh, Saturday, I believe it was, and then this just earlier today you had another scrimmage. You know, the disappointing thing in that scrimmage on the 11th, which was Saturday, was the fact, you know, that Clemson was the inability to pick up the short yardage first down situations in the goal line to be able to drive the ball into the end zone. That's something that's played Clemson Tiger football for a long time. I mean, you're constantly hearing this coaching staff and on back into Tommy Bowden's tenure at Clemson saying – uh, you know what, we just cannot, we just cannot get it done in the trenches. And every year you're continuing to rebuild. It doesn't matter who you're bringing in, that seems to be the case. It's, uh, our, our line is always young. It doesn't seem like that could be possible. Dalton Freeman said after the scrimmage, I'd rather have third and seven than third and two right now. I know a lot of Clemson people that sometimes feel that way. Now, I don't think Freeman misses it at all. I think he's hit the nail on the head. You know, there are a lot of opportunities that Clemson – has let slip through their fingers throughout the years because they just can't quite get it done in the trenches. And that's a frustrating thing. He says, I don't think it's a weakness of our offense. It's the weakness of our whole team. We've got to get it covered schematically. We don't know what's going on. Chad Moore says, in any short yardage situation, it's big. And it doesn't matter if it's practice. It's huge. It's an area where they need to focus on from last season, and they've got to improve on it to become a championship caliber football team that they want to be. Chad Morris is absolutely right. That is a situation that Clemson has put itself in time and time again. I think of a couple of road games in Boston College. A venue, and I've said this this year, when you look at the road schedule outside of Florida State and opening up in Atlanta, this is a road schedule that Clemson should win out. Should win out. But we've consistently allowed ourselves to go into these games on the road at Wake Forest, at Duke, at Boston College, and lose our edge. I don't want to hear any longer that we can't get it done on the road because of the environment. You know, the, the environment at Duke, 
I'm ty- I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want people to talk about it anymore. Put that to rest. You know what? Clemson Tiger football that I grew up on, they went in there, they punched you in the mouth. They just went in there and they knocked and kicked your teeth in. That's what I want to see from this team. You know, the championship caliber teams don't even, don't even think about that for a, a moment, not a second. They go in there and they flatten everybody. Florida State did it for close to 10, 12 years when they came into the Atlantic Coast Conference. Clemson has the ability to go to places like Wake Forest, like Duke, and like Boston College and do that. And in every year that we have that opportunity, that those are our road games, you have to take advantage of it because we've got a very favorable schedule outside of that, and the home games are good too. If you, if you didn't have a team like Virginia Tech on the schedule this year at home, you're talking about an unbelievably easy season. And you're going to have the people from the SEC and other conferences say, hey, you guys got an easy schedule anyway. I mean, you look at Clemson, once it's all said and done, most likely the schedule is going to end up somewhere in the you know, strength of schedule range. I would assume, unless the Atlantic Coast Conference has a great year, you're probably in the range from 30 to 50 as far as strength of schedule goes. Now, you might get fortunate. You might have an up year for Florida State. You might have a Virginia Tech team that's very good, and that will give you a little boost. But if you can't get it done in the trenches, you're in trouble. Now, there's a couple of players that have been making major headlines. Latik Townsend has just been all over the place. Dabo Sweeney couldn't have higher praises about that young man, and I think his, you know, his upper potential is unbelievable right now. He's headed clearly in the right direction. It's just some of those little things. Uh, but uh, Dabo says this guy will absolutely blow somebody up. Playing a little bit uh, of the nickelback. And, uh, you know, he's a kid who kind of brings a unique skill set. Fast, powerful, will not afraid to run through you like – it kind of reminds you a little bit of uh, uh, of the Kool-Aid man. What was his name? Cooley, how he just runs through walls. He doesn't care. I mean, that's – you know, Latique Townsend may not be the honey badger, but Latique Townsend definitely does not care. Now, after the first scrimmage, Taj Boyd said, when talking about this, this – uh, team and his motivation said, you know, it's about his hunger. It's about the drive, about this coaching staff, uh, really putting an emphasis on making him a better player. I think that's big for us. I talked about it here just a couple of weeks ago on the program, how when you look at Clemson quarterbacks in recent years, you've seen a major slump in year two at the helm. You know, the guy who's had the, the, the keys to the ignition has come in in year two and sputtered a little bit. You better hope that's not the case over in Atlanta. Auburn's Got a very good defensive line. They're young, but they're a very good defensive line. Going up against a Clemson staff or a Clemson offensive line that's rotating players around, trying to get pieces in. Gifford Timothy uh, most likely not going to play. I mean, so you you know you you've got some guys coming in there trying to fill those pieces. We've talked about the offensive line, the defensive line. The good news is some of the numbers that came out of today's scrimmage which would be Wednesday for those of you listening to us on the podcast edition. Hashtag TN Talk is the way to get to us on Twitter. We're at Clemson Podcast. Follow us for all the latest Clemson news, notes, information, and more 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We definitely want to hear from you. I see we've got Tommy in the chat room, and I know we've got Clemson Tom hanging out, getting ready to uh, have him come on after this first break. But today's scrimmage, there were some bright sides some bright signs for Clemson. Rashard Hall, you know, he had a a, a knee injury last year. He appeared to be at 100% uh, early in the spring and on into the fall camp. He had three interceptions in today's game. There were six total interceptions, and those things are tough to measure because if there were six interceptions by the defense, somebody obviously threw them. Now, and Dabo Sweeney even said that. He says, you know, if the offense does really well, it probably means that the defense stunk and vice versa. And that's a hard thing to gauge, and that's one of the reasons that a guy like Dabo Sweeney wanted to have some of those uh, some of those scrimmages, you know, even against other football programs, maybe some preseason games that didn't really count. Tommy asked us, hey, why does this team have to be the same old, same old Clemson? Different team, different coaches, different attitude due to a new coaching staff. We are Clemson. I can feel the difference, can't everyone else. I've been saying it. The problem that we have, Tommy, is there's a significant portion 
of this fan base that is so stubborn, they're just so stubborn that they don't want to believe the fact that that Dabo Sweeney can actually get the job done. You can't handle the truth. They cannot handle the truth. And the truth is that Dabo Sweeney, in a short amount of time, has not only made Clemson a, a, a better football team all around, top to bottom, better football team. He's recruited better football players, better recruiting classes. And he's gotten Clemson in the mindset and mentality of almost every young man across the country. If you want to go play college football at this time, Clemson is not the mecca of college football. We're not Southern Cal. We may not be as rich in tradition as a Michigan or even a Texas. But Clemson is on every young man's radar. Part of that is Sammy Watkins and what Sammy Watkins did last season that 8-0 start. But those things have really helped. And I'm with you, Tommy. I think this is a completely different team. As Stephon Anthony said it, Nathan Hunt says it in the chat room, Clemson is coming. All in all, though, I think uh, this team is coming together. We'll see how it goes, though. Rod McDowell had a 65-yard touchdown run, a 35-yard touchdown run in today's scrimmage. That's a good sign for Clemson. You know, Rod's the guy who I've kind of – pushed off to the side. You don't know, was it against first team defense, second team? But for his confidence, I think that's a good thing. Also, we mentioned Rashard Hall already, uh, but on the defensive front, they're in the middle. A couple of young guys, DJ Reader and Carlos Watkins, have played better. They're playing good. They might get some snaps in there. That's got to be exciting for Clemson fans. But maybe not quite as exciting, folks, as our next guest, Clemson Tom. I'm intrigued. Looking forward to having him on. Stay with us, Tiger fans. Clemson Tom on the other side of this break. You're listening to Tiger Net Talk with L. Swan. Want to hear the sound of hassle-free traveling? Amtrak takes the hassle out of traveling to over 500 destinations. You can stretch out in a spacious seat, relax in a sleeping car, and enjoy a hot meal in the dining car. And for those who want to kick back and take in the scenery, go right ahead. For everything you get on Amtrak, the one thing you won't get is this. So whether you're going to a family reunion or an away game, make it a whole lot nicer on Amtrak. Book your trip today at Amtrak.com or call 1-800-USA-RAIL. Listen, if you're considering buying hardwood flooring, don't do anything until you've written down this number and received your free Lumber Liquidators catalog. The flooring was high quality with an unbeatable price tag. Call in the next 10 minutes to get your free catalog. What I bought at Lumber Liquidators is a vastly higher quality than flooring I had installed six years ago and for a fraction of the cost. So if you want great hardwood flooring at unbeatable prices, trust Lumber Liquidators. We buy direct from the mills. Call right now to get our flooring guide and catalog absolutely free. It's filled with top quality hardwood flooring, including solid hardwoods, laminates, and bamboos, and even Bella Wood pre-finished flooring with a 100-year transferable warranty. The same floor Bob Vila has in his home. This free catalog is full of tips, ideas, and our flooring project list to make your buying decisions easy. Hurry, call right now to get a copy of this free guide and catalog. Call 877-238-6302 to get your free copy now. 877-238-6302. 877-238-6302. Hate the thought of shopping? All that hassle and can't find what you're looking for anyway? We understand. Retail stores make it difficult. Instead, try www.edistooutdoors.com. Edisto Outdoors features performance apparel and gear engineered for performance, comfort, and style. EdistoOutdoors.com. You'll enjoy the shopping and you'll enjoy the products. Great products from people who care. Hey there, Clemson Tiger fans. If you're interested in advertising with Clemson Podcasts, go to ClemsonPodcasts.com and click on the advertising link. And as always, go Tigers! Remember all the stories growing up as a kid About refrigerator Perry and just how hard he hit Welcome back into the program, TigerNet Talk. 
There he is. The man, the myth, the legend. He's got his Clemson belt. Clemson Tom, the anointed one, some might say. Welcome in to Tiger Net Talk, my man. Hey, brother. How are you? Man, we're doing good. Glad to have you on the program, and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you stay swamped out there because somebody has got to stay on the uh, enemy front and in the enemy camps uh, giving them grief, don't they? That's got to be me. I'm on the front line. I'm getting threats on Twitter and Facebook, but everybody's an Internet tough guy out there, I guess. <laughs> I heard that. Now, let me ask you this. For Clemson fans who, who may not know about you or what you do, uh, give them a, a, just a little bit of insight into what Clemson Tom is all about. Uh, well, basically, get on YouTube and kind of rile up the Tiger fan base. And uh, by accident and sometimes a little bit on purpose, I kind of get the opposing fan base a little riled up, kind of make them mad and kind of get all the players excited. Then I just sweet little Gamecock jokes or Virginia Tech jokes or whoever just make fun of people on Twitter. So if their mascot – if their mascot is some type of f bird or fowl, you go after them. Is that what you're telling me? Or a bumblebee, or <laughs> Maryland's ugly uniforms, or just furrier just being a you know not an American. I heard that. Well, here is a question for us. David Bishop wants to know why can't people believe in the coaches? It's something I was talking about before you came on. I know you were listening. What's your thought on that? What do you think about the people who say Dabo Sweeney's not going to get it done? I, he's got it done so far. I mean, he's got a, a good recruiting class coming in. We just won our first ACC championship, and I think it was, what, 20 years. Um, you just got to put a little bit of belief in him, man. Have a little faith. I mean, what, what what can you expect? I mean, we took a group of guys, lost a few games, but we won the ACC. Well, I mean, next up the BCS championship. I mean, I mean, I hate to say it, but I think, you know, Tom, that a lot of it is people are just stubborn about it. They're just stubborn. They want to be set in their ways. I've got a good friend. I'm not going to call his name because I don't want to hurt his feelings, Steve. But uh, Steve always, you know, he just wants to stick with the fact that he thought we should have gone out and gotten somebody um, better. By the way, CU Tailgaters checking out in the chat room. He says, Clemson Tom is the man. And Tom, and anybody in the chat room, let us know how Tom's audio is. Sometimes it can get a little squirrely. Uh, on the guest line, but we'll hopefully square him away uh, pretty good here. Tom, i got another question for you. So where the ideas of these videos come from? Like, I mean, are you sitting around the house and you go, y you know, I think I'm going to shoot a YouTube video. Well, uh, one of my buddies actually talked me into it last season. I just, I wasn't going to put my face out there. It's kind of really not, you know, how I, how I roll, but he talked me into it. I got about three, four in me and, uh, just went on there and, and made a video, not even thinking I'd get five hits. And if, it, if I didn't get anybody hits, I was just going to delete it because it's not really what I do. The next thing you know, it's got 20,000 hits, and some of the coaches are following me on Twitter and <laughs> sending me messages. And, you know, Todd's boys asked me to become my friend on Twitter, which was – that was new to me. So, we just kind of took off from there. Do you consider Gamecock Will your arch nemesis? No. I need someone with a little bit more education to become my nemesis. I've heard him talk, and uh, I actually have to re-listen. Uh, I have to rewind it on my on my iPod. And uh, no, he's not a nemesis at all. I mean, it's kind of like how the nemesis of Alabama isn't South Carolina. They're on two different playing fields. Right. And they're not rivals. They're the short bus of the SEC. <laughs> Now, now, where does your passion come from for Clemson? I mean, there are, look, there are passionate fans out there. There are fans that give hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, there are fans that will do anything for this university. But what about your passion specifically? Where does it come from? Uh, I don't know. I just think it's something you have. I mean, I've made up curse words when we've lost, and <laughs> I've ran farther than if, like, a wild hog was, was behind me when we've, we've won big games. I mean, it's just something you have. Some people are just, you know, probably a bigger fan than me, but they're just more internal, emotional-wise. Me, I wear my emotions on my sleeve. So, that's just pretty much how it comes from. Are you loved more by Clemson fans or hated more by opposer, opposing fans? I'm going to say probably hated more by opposing fans because <laughs> they can actually put a face and a name right. to the opponent. And, I mean, I, I ain't hard to find. It's Clemson Tom on Twitter, Facebook Clemson Tom. I mean, I'm all, all over sports radio since football season, so. I think a little bit easier to read some Dabo things. So I think they just kind of put it all off on me, which is fine. So you have I'll to the blunt of all their jokes. You you have to carry the burden for Coach Sweeney. That's what you're telling me. 
pretty much the day he told told me when I was speaking at an NFL event at uh, Charleston that I was a Clemson legend. He could have just shot me right there, and I could we could have called it a day. I mean, it, it didn't get much better than that. So yeah, I definitely got his back, and I stick up for him. Any truth to the rumor that uh, your blood is actually orange? No, that's that's true. That's true. Yeah, it's common kind of winter when it gets cold, it turns purple. Which is the thing. <laughs> which is which is convenient too. I mean, it, you know, if you go to a game and it starts off really hot, by the end, I mean, you've kind of had the full shift in colors. That's nice. Yeah, it, it'll boil. You get me going. Now, uh, would you like to formally declare your candidacy for the uh, athletic director job at Clemson here on the program? Absolutely. I think I'm a great fit. I mean, we definitely got to get somebody in there that's going to get us in swapper space. I mean. They basically had fake – actually, they not basically. They did have fake classes where people were taking – getting straight A's. And the class didn't even exist. I mean, hell, sign me up. I'm ready to get that degree going. <laughs> so someone's got to step up in there. I mean, I've already got a house on Lake Healy. You know, I'm ready to go, you know. Got the dog, got the family. I mean, put me in there. I I'm going to be early. I'm going to stay late. And uh, I'm – the sideline passes would probably be, you know, worth class submission. Would you give up the videos? Absolutely. You would give up the videos. I, I won't quit calling in. I would give up the videos. I won't quit calling in the sports shows <laughs> because I got an obligation to, to some of my fans who host those shows. Would we have to refer to you as Athletic Director Clemson Tom? If you feel obligated, but you can just keep calling me Tom or CP or whatever you want to do. Now, I've got a little part of our program that we have whenever we have former Clemson players, legends, even. So I guess we're going to have to roll it out for you. It's called the Clemson 10. It's a little something we invented here uh, on the program. Uh, so what does Clemson mean to you, Clemson Tom? It's, it's, it's more of a family. I married a Gator. And uh, I don't know, at least it's not a Gamecock. But they seem to be too big of a program. You come to Clemson, everybody seems to know everybody. The players, I mean, it's, it's nothing to walk down downtown and bump into family. You can't touch me walking. But uh, it's more of a family atmosphere. It doesn't seem like everybody's too big time. and It's more of a family, small, close, and just more intimate. Now imagine you were given the opportunity to run down the hill on game day. Maybe you're carrying the 10 pounds of gold on your – yep, where, there it is. Right. If you're not watching that's the – pro, real, the That's the real deal. If you're not watching it, by the way, some people might be saying, what do you mean the 10 pounds of gold? Listen, we do this program live 10 p.m. Wednesday evenings on the front page of TigerNet.com. And if you watch the program, we've got a live video feed. You can come on and do just like Tom and ask questions uh, and be a part of the program just like this with the video. So we're actually looking at the video of Tom. He's got his gold belt with his nice orange tiger paw on there. Uh, just you know, and It must feel good to carry that gold. But if you get to run down the hill on game day ever – if that were to ever happen, Tom, what's going through your mind? Uh, first off, I'm probably going to have goosebumps. I might shed a tear or swell and uh, probably hold up a belt so everybody can see it, point at whoever we're about to play and give me a little cut throat because they're definitely about to, about to die. <laughs> you know, slap the rock, kiss it a little bit, and just pray I don't fall when I'm running down the hill. So you go uh, old school WCW, great Muda. Just real slow. Nice. And then point. If we're playing a game talk, I'm pulling straight at Steve Sturgeon. Who's had the biggest influence on your life? Uh, probably my, my mom and my dad, my parents. Your favorite spot on campus? Uh, probably Tony's Pizza. They got the best pizza. The coldest beers, and you can probably find me any, any time there. Besides Death Valley, obviously. Right. So that's, that's usually where I am. Greatest moment that you've actually attended in Clemson history? Uh, let me think. When I was a kid, I, I was there when we beat the Gamecocks. But overall, it would probably be when uh, I got to eat uh, next to, to Dabo and kind of introduce him at the Brown Grouse for Charleston. That was, that was pretty much a highlight right there. Toughest moment during your, uh, your Clemson years? That would be the West Virginia game. <laughs> I, was, I was spotted early, and they seemed to have followed me. And I was getting emails and Twitter messages, and I mean, you name it. I mean, it, it, it got kind of rowdy towards the end of the game. 
What's the most difficult class you've ever taken? That would be business law. I had to take it twice. Just wanted to go again or had to take it twice? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to take it twice. I don't know who schedules business law at 730 in the morning. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it didn't really work out in my favor. I don't know if you, you noticed, but I like to have a little bit of a social social life. So my, my bedtime is probably usually when people are getting up. What's the best stadium on the road in the ACC that Clemson plays in? That, I'd have to go with Virginia Tech. I like it when they, I like it when they dip up and down and play in ACDC or or Metallica. I can't remember which one it is, and I like eating them big turkey legs. What's one thing Clemson fans don't know about Clemson, Tom? One thing that they don't know. Um, apparently, they think I'm a huge alcoholic, but I'm not. When I started doing my videos, I'd have like a beer before I did them. Right. And then apparently, if you have like one or two beers in your videos you have 12 during the videos. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, I ain't going to turn out a cold beer, but I think they, they take it a little bit to the extreme. All right. Ten years from now, what do Clemson, what do you hope Clemson fans remember about Clemson Tom? Um, my love for Clemson, um, pretty much how I have made the entire game talk nation completely upset, even when they beat us three years in a row, it's still, sometimes I feel like I'm a thorn in their side. They beat us and I still come back. And they beat us three years in a row, but we're, we're winning in the game of life. And I think they know that. And I keep reminding them about it. Excellent job, Tom, man. Hey, I tell you what, I appreciate you being on the program. And, you know, as we were talking on Twitter, follow him. He's at Clemson Tom. You see it right there uh, on your screen if you're watching the program. Follow him on Twitter. But more importantly, uh, man, I want to get you back on here throughout the season from time to time to touch bases with you and uh, just see how you're doing and, and find out what the opposing opponents are uh, are saying to you. When can we expect your next video for those people who are waiting for it? Well, my pregame video came out the other week. You can find that on YouTube. You can just Google, or not Google, but YouTube, uh, Clinton Tom, it'll come up. But my Auburn video, that was going to be pretty epic. Uh, had a few people look at it already. That's coming out Friday. So it will be posted. If you follow me on Twitter, I always post that stuff and give me a link to it. All right. Clemson Tom, ladies and gentlemen. Tom, appreciate your time, my man. Thank you very much. Good to stay all day, bud. All right, stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. We're heading out to a short break here. Let Cody Webb take you out four years into five, or in my case, four years into seven. We'll be back right after this. downtown with my fake ID and watch Doug McCormick rock TDs on a Friday night. Have you ever wondered how you could make a difference in someone's life? What if you could help hundreds or even thousands of children? You might think it impossible, but it's within your reach. Right now, today, students in the U.S. rank 32nd in world math skills. It's time for our children to catch up, and you can help. Become an owner of one of the world's fastest growing franchises, Mathnasium. Mathnasium is the leading math-only learning center in the U.S. Its only purpose is to make our kids better at math. Imagine helping hundreds, even thousands of students in your community improve in school and raise their self-esteem, all while doing something you truly love. Call us at 800-663-9549 to learn more about Mathnasium's exciting franchise opportunities. That's 800-663-9549 to learn how you can make a difference. Doing something you truly love. That's 800-663-9549. 800-663-9549. Hate the thought of shopping? All that hassle and can't find what you're looking for anyway? We understand. Retail stores make it difficult. Instead, try www.edistooutdoors.com. Edisto Outdoors features performance apparel and gear engineered for performance, comfort, and style. Edistooutdoors.com. You'll enjoy the shopping and you'll enjoy the products. Great products from people who care. Hey there, Clemson Tiger fans. If you're interested in advertising with Clemson Podcasts, go to ClemsonPodcasts.com and click on the advertising link. And as always, go Tigers! Listen, if you're considering buying hardwood flooring, don't do anything until you've written down this number and received your free Lumber Liquidators catalog. The flooring was high quality. 
quality with an unbeatable price tag. Call in the next 10 minutes to get your free catalog. What I bought at Lumber Liquidators is a vastly higher quality than flooring I had installed six years ago, and for a fraction of the cost. So if you want great hardwood flooring at unbeatable prices, trust Lumber Liquidators. We buy direct from the mills. Call right now to get our flooring guide and catalog absolutely free. It's filled with top quality hardwood flooring, including solid hardwoods, laminates, and bamboos, and even Bella Wood prefinished flooring with a 100-year transferable warranty. The same floor Bob Vila has in his home. This free catalog is full of tips, ideas, and our flooring project list to make your buying decisions easy. Hurry, call right now to get a copy of this free guide and catalog. Call 877-238-6302 to get your free copy now. 877-238-6302. 877-238-6302. Clemson Tigers, we coming for you. All right, welcome back in. Tiger Dad Talk, that tailgate party getting ready to get going over in Atlanta. The Tigers versus the Tigers. We've got tweets. We've got emails. we got a lot of stuff to get to. we got questions in the chat room. This is the way the show should be. You know, the thing is, sometimes when you do this show, uh, every once in a while you'll have a program where there aren't a whole lot of people who tune in for whatever reason. And what ends up happening is, of course, well, you kind of have to roll with all your material. Well, I like it a lot better when I get some fresh stuff from you guys. So we'll start off with the, the text question that was asked in the chat room that will pop up here. David Bishop says, Dabo says Tony Stewart looks good and people still want to redshirt him. Look, I'm torn here in this, in this decision by Dabo Sweeney. I think this is going to be a, a, a pretty tough decision for him because when you look at Tony Stewart coming out of high school, the expectations being what they were, if you play him this year, and I'm not saying that's the wrong decision to make, but if you play Tony Stewart this year, the thing you run into is if he's injured again. That's what I think scares more people. You may only get one complete season out of this young man before he goes pro if he plays up to the level that many people hope he will. Now, I, I don't want to ever second-guess Dabo Sweeney. I think Dabo Sweeney's got his uh, pulse on Clemson better than anybody else out there, obviously because of uh, the situation he's in. And he wants to play the best guys if he can get them out on the field. But I do agree with those people who say, you know what, look, this is a risky move right now. If he's not 100%, we shouldn't let this guy go. Uh, you know, that, that's my thing. If he's not 100% and the young man is willing to wait, that's the other thing. The, you, you know, we always talk about college sports and how it, it's about the fans and the passion and the pageantry. Ultimately, you know what, it's about the kids. It's about these young men who are trying to climb that ladder to get to the next level to play professionally. And if this were to hinder that for him by putting him out there, I completely think he should not play. But if he feels in his heart that he's 100% and he can go all out, why not let him get in there? That's, you know, that's really where I sit, sit on that. And I think that's where we all should sit. This comes down to Dabo uh, and, and Tony's decision for Tony. And whether you think Dabo's right or wrong or their decision ultimately comes down to red shirting or not, however, whatever side of the fence you fall on, I think the big thing you have to understand is this is bigger than our program. This is about a young man and his potential future. And if he does decide that that's the route he wants to go with a red shirt, because you know the NCAA in their infinite wisdom, really, sh that was a situation with Tony Stewart that I think could have easily fallen under the ability to red shirt last year then that might not be a question coming into this season as he would be a redshirt freshman again getting another opportunity. But the rules are what they are. And the NCAA, whether you like him or not, says that Tony Stewart is a uh, sophomore. And so, you know, it comes down to, in my mind, whether or not he can be uh, what everybody hopes and if he feels mentally that he can get the job done. Now then, uh, when you look here uh, at some other questions in the chat room, uh, somebody was asking about, let's see, i got to scroll back up a little bit. Give me one second. Says, hey, Lawton, have you heard anything about the rumor that they aren't doing balloons at the games anymore? That would really be a downer. Uh, the balloons add a lot of pageantry and atmosphere when they run down the hill. You know, first off, even if we weren't talking helium shortages in our country, which is something I don't think any of us ever thought we would be talking about or helium shortages worldwide or the price of helium um, first and foremost I mean it, it is a terrible 
terrible thing for the environment, as I'm aware. Even if there were abundant helium everywhere, you know, just this overabundance of helium, you know, putting those balloons out, they kill lots of birds, and they end up landing in, like, one guy's yard somewhere in, 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 in east or west Georgia. You know, everything's probably coming down at about the same spot. You know, I think that when you look at the overall pageantry of college sports, I don't know that balloons necessarily have to be involved if that's the case. I have, you know, heard people talking about fireworks and other things. It's a big change. You know, if there's one tradition at Clemson, this was a big thing going on on the Tiger board this past week is all the traditions, the cannon, everything that's involved there. Uh, they, well, they may be. Nathan says he thinks they are biodegradable. Perhaps. But how long do they take to degrade? I mean, if we run a test, that, that would be my big question. The thing I, I remember the most when I was a kid at Clemson is the Tiger sitting on top of the scoreboard. And I really hope that that I, I know it's there, but it just doesn't get the it doesn't get the attention that I think that deserves. Because back when when that thing came into his existence, probably in the fifties, uh, maybe early sixties, that would have been one of the coolest things. That was the jumbotron of its era. Clemson scored, and I can remember turning my head to see the lights on the eyes light up and the tail wag on that tiger that's one thing you know keep that thing freshly painted keep the gears greased or whatever you have to do to keep it running and make that a bigger feature in the stadium and i don't mean by making it bigger that's the other thing over the years as as the jumbotron and in, in the east end zone has gotten bigger and bigger the tiger seemingly has gotten smaller and smaller i still like him featured there but make him a bigger part Zoom in on him so that he's big on the screen for a little while. Give those younger Clemson fans that moment that we so you know so passionately remember. So I really hope that I really hope that um you know we we get that taken care of. And I know I've got some people who can't hear the program. Tom, I'm guessing that you can't hear it uh, because you've got it muted. So somebody in the chat room tell him I think he muted his computer. Uh, when he came on the program. Okay, good. He's got us back. All right, so that's kind of where I am with that situation. I don't know about the balloons. I, I, I really, you know, I hate to see them go, but if they go, I can deal with it. There are bigger fish to fry. Now, I want to show you a picture of the new scoreboard. This was tweeted out by CU underscore athletics a little bit earlier today, about six hours ago. And if you're watching during the break here on uh, TigerNet.com, uh, you probably already saw this picture, but there's a couple of interesting things that I do want to notice here or note for you here. If you can see, I'm going to have to move my banner a little bit. Um, first off, that's a view of obviously the new scoreboard. You can see the size of it. The clarity looks great. It looks to be you know roughly the same size as the previous one. I, I do miss Tiger Time. You guys probably remember the clock there at the stadium. I, I still miss that. But there are a couple of noticeable things that are different here. Uh, in and around the lower portion, you'll notice the bricks that have come up, where in the old days there was a wrought iron fence there that people could easily see through to the stadium. It is my understanding that does not run all the way out, but it does exist. That is not a faux wall. That is a real brick wall there. And the other intriguing part of this that kind of had me really wondering what this is is right in here, and I'll zoom in just a little bit for you. There's a little statue right there. Now, I don't know what that statue is or who that statue is or where that statue's going. From the appearance to me, and maybe I'm just seeing or reading into these things, that looks like it could be a Frank Howard. It looks like that could be a Frank Howard there. Uh, possibly the fedora cap on top. Maybe there's going to be a little Frank Howard overwatching Howard's Rock, which is pretty cool. Because if you're not going to give 110%, keep your filthy hands off it. That's what I got to say. Tommy in the chat room says, since we're talking pregame rituals, how pathetic does the Fighting Tigers flag and the flags that, flag are, that the flag runners use look? Awful. Hmm. I hadn't really thought about it. So are are they too big, Tommy? They you know they used to just run the paw, 
They used to just run the Paul. Now they run all all the letters. I don't think that's a tiger. That that looks like a man. Oh, the the tiger costume, maybe. Maybe the tiger dressed up. I I'm not sure. <laughs> you you folks in the chat room will enjoy Clemson Tom's pregame ritual. Finally, before we get you out of here, just a couple of more things to get to. Jeff in Phoenix. On Twitter, he's Jeff I N P H X. Says, uh, is this bowl game, the opening game between Clemson and Auburn, the Tiger Bowl, and will there be a box of Frosted Flakes awarded as the trophy? You know, with these two teams getting together, which I love, I love this matchup. I think it, it, it's one of those rivalries in the South that could have been so much more had these two teams gotten together more than they did over the past 50 years. And they've had some matchups in bowl games. Uh, I, I get where you're going with that. There's so many similarities between these two schools. Uh, you know, it's it's always a, a heated matchup between the programs. One, because they're not the state school. You know, you heard in the intro Dabo Sweeney's rant there from last season, which I love. Absolutely love it. But Auburn fans, much like Clemson fans, sometimes feel like, hey, you know what, we're not the state school. Our name doesn't. You know, it's not the name of the state. People sometimes think Clemson could be in Georgia or North Carolina. They may not know. Maybe it's in Tennessee. They're not sure. I think most people know Auburn's in Alabama, but there may be a segment of our population that's not 100% certain. They're probably not big sports fans, but maybe. I think sometimes that gives a little bit of edge to this. It's the two uh, non-schools not named after the states that they play in, which is pretty intriguing. I appreciate that question. And finally, Clemson Cody wants to know uh, who's going to be the surprise player on the defense this year. My pick, we asked David Hood a similar question last week. Who's the name that people are going to be talking about? He went with Stephon Anthony. I'm going with Malachi Goodman. I think Malachi Goodman, you look at Clemson's recent history with the defensive end position, you look at the skill set that young man brings in, into the table, into really getting significant playing time this year for the first time in his career. I mean, he's had, you know, he's got tremendous, uh, tremendous amount of ability, and he's had a lot of experience. But now he's really going to get the playing time, and the burden's going to be put on him. Sometimes guys play really good with that kind of motivation. Uh, he's a young man who, when he came into the program, I honestly thought we would see a lot more out of him early on in his career. I would, I would label him as a little bit of a slow start, but he has a real chance this year to show Clemson Tiger fans what he's all about. I think he can be a huge player. And finally, Mike writes in, he's at Bent Zero on Twitter. He says, I always get nervous this time of year. We're still hearing all the coaches say things like, we've got a long way to go. When in reality, there's not much time until game number one. How ready do you think this team is to take on Auburn in the rest of the season? Keep up the good work. Appreciate Bent Zero always checking in on this. You know, it's an intriguing game, this Auburn matchup, and we're going to cover that in a couple of weeks. As you know, Clemson Hotline and Tiger Net Talk are getting rolling together. Two shows a week for you fans out there, for everybody who enjoys what we do for you. It's an it's interesting. I mean, you look at Auburn, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. They lost Zeke Pike. Uh, they've got a freshman running back, Javon Robinson, who's under NCAA investigation. Go go figure. The, the Reuben Foster stuff's going on there. Some say that's not a big deal. Some say that's just the uh, Atlanta, the uh, Alabama, you know, high school league basically looking into some of that stuff. You know, but this is not a team with Malzahn. They don't have Michael Dyer. Cam Newton's not there. Clint Mosley, I think, is a little bit banged up, which means it's probably going to be Kyle Frazier going for them. Wide receivers, they lost a couple of their top guys. Lutzen Kirkin is back. I mean, he, he's a threat. But offensively, Auburn is nowhere near what they were, I would say, last year when they were way down. And they're not even close to what they were two years ago when they surprised everybody and won the national title. I mean, Brian Van Gorder coming in, he's got that, that pro lineage. 
that pro background. Clemson Tom in the chat room says, Auburn is telling their fans to wear blue. And perhaps we will beat them black and blue over in Atlanta. I'll get into a little Clemson Tom mode for a minute. I'll let Clemson Tom kind of get me kind of juiced up. They've got some good defensive players, don't get me wrong. They, they really do. But, you know, if they open the season with a loss to Clemson, they got a couple of tough games coming up, LSU, Arkansas, Mississippi State. I've seen some people that have them picked fifth in the SEC West. And if the Clemson Tigers expect to be number one in the Atlantic division of the ACC, you better be able to beat the fifth best team over in the SEC West. If you can't get that done, you got a lot of trouble. Well, I hope we covered all your questions. Thanks to Clemson Tom for coming on board with us here on the program. Can't wait to tell you about who our guest pickers are going to be. I'll tell you this. Former player, some coaches, and a Clemson personality. That And that's all I'll give you. Tune in next week. For more Tiger Net Talk, Tommy says, hey, we were better than them the last two years. Why not this year? We are Clemson. That's a way to send us out. Thanks, guys. I enjoyed having you. See you all next time. And as always, you all take care now. And go Tigers! Go Tigers!